saying that is natural? Uh, no, natural is one percent. So yes, I do have a natural ability. That's one percent. It yeah. can't be one percent. It is. It's even zero point zero zero nine. Okay. I'm saying you have to work at it, and that's what I tell people all the time. Whether you're speaking or writing, yeah, I am gifted. True. Right. Someone who may not be as gifted, who works hard, hard. will excel, and you've seen that happening. Yeah. You've seen people who who come with a complex because they have this natural gift it's spontaneous mm. because they know that with little effort mm. they'll make it through mm-hmm. so the they person, take it for granted yes they take it for granted the person who works harder excels because they appreciate hard work they appreciate time they appreciate tenacity reading mm. and therefore i learned to work hard mm. i never thought i'd have to study writing but i did my masters in creative writing mm. It does not take away from your creativity. Mm. It just enables you to enjoy your creativity more because you're earning from it. So it is important for the money issue to be sorted. Absolutely. Let me tell you something. Yeah. It's the biggest lie when they tell you it's your passion and what. Yeah. Do you know that passion will become the biggest discomfort of your life? Yeah. I say this with the utmost confident confidence because I've been through that. It's my passion. Yeah. and then you are stuck broke you're mm. still paying rent mm. and then you grow up and you have children mm. and then you have all these bills and because you started because I started my writing journey early before I had any of those challenges mm. I always thought by the time I'm 30 mm. I'll be doing so many other things and then I'll have published anyway it's not that mm. all right I could have gone into academia because academia gives you a consistent income doesn't it mm. so I could have mm. gone into academia done three degrees mm. in writing mm-hmm. and been an assistant professor mm-hmm. in another university because that money is consistent yeah. you get I found it prudent to have conversations on Wednesday's conversations in this month of July 2022 with writers and uh, publishers and uh, today is one of those days that I bring you yet another conversation that I had with one of the most interesting people you'll ever hear talk you'll hear her speak you hear her passionate about her craft it is Beverly Nambozo she helps individuals and organizations through creative communication by public speaking training team building and customer care service training but she is an author a poet a speaker and a distinguished toast master you don't want to know in 2012 she achieved a distinction from her masters in creative writing at lancaster university beverly runs rich diction enterprises limited and the babishai newe poetry foundation with her passion for travel she hopes to visit every country every country in the world by 70 today's conversation listen carefully is way over and above writing you want to listen to this if you are interested in writing interested in business of writing interested in the ecosystem of writing you wanted to find information about this you got to tune into this one Welcome to the Life Signatures podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut there's got to be more to life than this. And now here is your host Lawrence Namale. Signatures episodes are brought to you by africanbooks.com which is an online ebook platform that seeks to broadcast the African Christian voice to the world. 
As such, they have become a hub for African content connecting African writers and publishers with a global reading audience. Publishing your books on their site is free and easy with authors having full control over their content and the price they choose to sell at it. I was personally blown away by the concept that AfricanBooks.com is coming up with. Things like no content from their site or their app is going to be run on laptops so that people can easily copy. In other words, your content as a writer is restricted from digital multiplication or digital copying. So you remain intact with your information. Another concept that I got so blown away with was the fact that in some time to come, in due course, AfricanBooks.com will be starting to announce African Writer of the Year. In other words, there will be competitions in all African countries to figure out who is the best published author. And I also fell in love with the fact that countries can actually compete against each other. You can have African authors going at it after each other. And your book as an author will be reviewed and have some stars and recommended upon that particular platform. The thing is that it's an answer to Amazon.com. You know, with Amazon, what happens? You've got to have an account in the Americas or whatever, or in Europe before you can get paid as an author. But here, the local currency is in play and the local means of getting paid are in play. So to get started, go to AfricanBooks.com as an author or as a publisher and even as a reader if you wanted to read your African favorite authors. Enjoy. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, whatever place it is, you are tuned on to Life Signatures Radio. I don't know if tuned on to is the correct English, but we have an expert with us today who is going to help us And along the way. This month, this month of July, we are talking to writers, writers, people who are creative in one way or another. They have works, body of works out there. I don't know if body of works is also uh, another correct thing to say, but they have books, they have poems, they have things related with writing. And I felt it good to talk to such like people so that we can be able to learn from them. When I was looking for such like people and I was actually looking for female writers in Uganda, I was led to Beverly Nambozo by more than one person. Your name was coming up. Beverly, how are you doing? First of all, July is my birthday month, so I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. I'm having a wonderful time. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you. Good, good, good. You see, it's it's um it's one thing to be a writer, but it's one another thing actually to be identified by more than one person. Actually, a, a host of people yes. as a writer. It means that the kind of work you've done is speaking for itself. Yes, and as writers, we never know that. You know, you don't know actually, yeah. apart from your peers and the people who are in your circle. You can never tell. Yeah, and. Uh, Let's just go there. At some moment in time when you are not knowing that uh, people are appreciating your work, does it? What, what does it do to you? That's a great question. Because when I started, as a child, I was surrounded by books and I was good at English. Yeah. I like the musicality mm. of the words. Mm-hmm. That's what it is, playing with rhyme. Mm. The time when I started writing, I thought poetry meant rhyming. Yeah. That was how I learned poetry. But I did like the musicality of words. I'd read books, consume them. There were never enough books for me. Yeah. And I'm grateful that we have lots of e-books as well because that's what I do a lot on my phone. Yeah. And so it didn't matter that I wasn't recognized, but it did matter if I did not get an A 
So doing well in English was so important to me mm. because it validated me. I needed that validation. Mm. It didn't matter so much that I didn't get the applause from my mm-hmm. classmates, mm-hmm. but from the teacher, that was the immediate validation mm. that I needed. Mm. And and it worked well. I've it, always been there, validated as a writer from my teachers. Right. Is there a particular teacher? For example, for me, if I look at, back at my life, there is a particular teacher in primary school mm-hmm. who took special attention to me. And, uh, of course, when I went to high school, I dropped writing. But yes. in primary school, there's a particular teacher whom I can identify that this guy, he took special attention mm-hmm. and he nurtured my writing, he actually planted a seed of writing in me. Mm-hmm. If you look back in your life, was there such a one? Was there? A t- I went to several primary schools. I'll talk about Kampala parents. Yeah. One of the headmistresses is called Mrs. Gladys Wambuzi. Mm. And she taught us a lot of rhyme, poetry, mm. composition writers, writing. She made us love to know spellings of complicated words, mm-hmm. four-syllable words and mm-hmm. have spelling tests. Mm-hmm. I had to make sure I got 30 out of 30 again. That was my validation. Mm. To be praised by her meant everything. Mm. And then every end of year, I think from P4 to P7, I always got the end of year English award. Mm. It may be a lamp, a kerosene lamp yeah. or something, but it but mattered it to me. It was yeah. an award. Yeah. It really meant a lot from the teachers. Yeah. From the students, not much because in primary... The level of language and articulation from children is a bit varied because many of them haven't yet been exposed. Exactly. And and then it changes. Of course, as they grow older, they learn to appreciate language much more. Yeah. But from the teachers, it meant everything. To know that I was getting the award yeah. for being the best in English, and it meant so much. So she definitely played a huge role. A did, huge did, role. did you have competition from uh, fellow students, fellow pupils, and so on? Or uh, the, yes. the award was just for Beverly? It, it was easy for me to win. And the reason I say that, because my exposure was different. Mm. In primary school, especially in Uganda, in the 80s, mm. not many people had the exposure I had, all yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And because they lived in Uganda at a time when there was a lot of political turmoil and yeah. school and education was difficult. Their parents struggled. I didn't have that. Yeah. Because my father's diplomat, so I was away. Yeah, yeah. My exposure was when I returned, of course my English was at a different of level. Of course. Now that has changed. They've, they're so yeah, learned, these people. people. They're yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know, because they now have acquired the knowledge themselves. Yeah, and so yeah. that's why it was easier for me. Ah. My privilege was different. So I don't, the comparison is not fair, actually. I see. Yeah, it's not I fair. Yeah. But, but you see, we can glean something from there yeah. in that the, the environment in which kids are being mm-hmm. raised is critical in their development. Yes. Especially in creativity yes. and, and so on. Uh, an environment of peace. And I think you're given also an, an, an environment where you could explore. Oh, yes. Your, whatever, whatever it is that you love. It was limitless. Do. Yeah. We, there was no denying us anything at mm-hmm. all. I'm telling you anything. Mm. Yeah. So did you like uh, speci- spe- specialize in uh, writing at some point in time in, in school? What, what course did you pursue in, in uh, university, mm-hmm. things like that? I always knew I wanted to write. Whether yeah. or not I did other things, I yeah. knew writing would always be there. So yeah. I always knew I would publish, I would write. Right. Whether I became a doctor, a lawyer, yeah. a mechanic, yeah. a butcher, it didn't matter. Yeah. I knew I would have books with my name yeah. on it. For my undergraduate degree i did want to study creative writing alone mm. my career university didn't have that and mm. i was advised the closest is education, education. and literature and english yeah. which i did yeah it didn't provide me the, the uh, inspiration needed, the resources you not at all mm. uh, though in third year we had tutors like susan kiguli mm. and professor wangusa who really made poetry and it's just so exciting mm. and so it was in my third year when i was about to leave that i really began to enjoy literature much much more mm. the sonnets of shakespeare and rubad did oh my goodness it mm. was a whole new level of wowness mm. after that shortly after my undergraduate degree i joined femright uganda women writers association mm. in the year 2000 2001 mm-hmm. even meeting somebody who said i'm a journalist was the wowest moment for yeah. any creative person yeah. it was just a wow moment to yeah. to see charles and young oh, this is you and you yeah. shake his hand that's enough yeah. for you yeah. that's that's enough for yeah. your uh, all the inspiration you needed and, and at femrite i actually met ugandan women who proudly said they were writers that was the first time right. in my life right. i met a ugandan writer who was actually a writer yeah. with her name on a book yeah and who said my job is to write oh my goodness these people exist yeah. yes these people existed and they were normal mm-hmm. and they 
accepted me. Mm-hmm. That really helped as well. Mm-hmm. As you said, the environment helps. It really helped as well. So for three, four years, I was there as a volunteer mm-hmm. with some other friends who are actually writing mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. ardently. You may or may not interview them. I'm not sure, mm-hmm. but I'm sure you've heard of them. Mm-hmm. And that's what really propelled our journey. We've branched off and we confidently call ourselves writers while we have pursued other professions and other resource yeah. earning measures it's okay we confidently yeah. call ourselves writers yeah. we've published we have managed writing events festivals yeah. Yeah. we've traveled in the name of writing Whoa. we have been paid in the name of writing Whoa. we have been called as experts in the name of writing yeah. and so the journey is that isn't it yeah but the journey starts uh, you, you said you talked about my child environment that mattered but there are people who have been born in creative environments and they take a different turn, right? Mm -hmm. I think what was there is that the environment clicked with me. Mm -hmm. If I'd been in another environment, it may not have worked Mm -hmm. because we know that, don't Mm -hmm. we? We know that in O-level, some people do so terribly Mm -hmm. and then in Mm A-level, they excel. Mm -hmm. It's just that the environment clicked Mm -hmm. in A-level and Mm -hmm. and you're like, this can't be the same person, really? Mm You know, in your school groups, mm-hmm. some people are so outgoing and you're like, mm-hmm. but you're so, what happened to you? You're changed. Yeah. You're so, yeah. and they're, they're masters yeah. in what they do. Yeah. And so the environment clicked with me. Yeah. It clicked. I was supposed to be a creative. I've always meant to be a creative. You, you would say you are talented, you're gifted in that is natural? Uh, no, natural is 1%. So yes, I do have a natural ability. That's Wait 1%. It can't yeah. be 1%. It is. It's even 0.009. Okay. I'm saying you have to work at it. And that's what I tell people all the time, whether you're speaking or writing. Yeah. I am gifted, true. Right. Someone who may not be as gifted, who works hard, hard, will excel. And you've seen that happening. Yeah. You've seen people who who come with a complex because they have this natural gift. It's spontaneous mm. because they know that with little effort, mm. they'll make it through. Mm-hmm. So the they person, take it for granted. Yes, they take it for granted. The person who works harder excels because they appreciate hard work, they appreciate time, they appreciate tenacity, reading, mm. and therefore I learned to work hard. Mm. I never thought I'd have to study writing, but I did my master's in creative writing. Mm. I got a partial scholarship for it. That was at Lancaster. You have to work hard at it. You have to get mentors. I had people looked at my work and said, listen, these are all the editorial adjust helps when other people look at your work. You know, uh, at some point in time for a writer, it can be scary. It can be scary. Of course it is. because it's a Editing, I'm told, is, is, uh, is the most scary part for it's a writer. Because yeah. It's personal. Because it's personal. They're inf- interfering in your personal space. They're exactly. telling you. They're not telling your work it's not good. You yeah. feel they're telling you. Yeah. And that's why editors have to be really careful in saying, this story would be better if... if. Instead of saying, you know what, Beverly... Why do you always make your first person unbelievable? <laughs> Why do you always pick single women as your protagonist? Yeah, yeah. You need to. I'll yeah. say, you know what, Beverly? Try making your protagonist a young child and see how that will change. Mm-hmm. Because your setting is Kampala City mm-hmm. in the 1990s. Mm-hmm. And young children went through quite an interesting time. Mm-hmm. That You see? Mm-hmm. Look at that. It's, it's, it's really important to time is difficult it's it's not easy and i know because i'm editing books right now yeah, it's not easy. and when the client says beverly this is what i wanted it takes me time to recover yeah. and i've been in it for a long time yeah. <laughs> even now it takes me yeah. oh my goodness yeah. is it me what's wrong with me yeah but it's the work <laughs> you would say it's needed the editing of the course. allowing yourself to be you know checked by other people of course it is it is it's part it, of the process. It's part of the process. You just have to be careful with whom. Mm. You make sure that there are people who are, well, first of all, there are different types. Get experts mm. who do it as a job, who nip things as a job. Professional, absolutely. It, yeah. Literally, who have never even heard of you, so they even look at it anonymously mm. and return. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. it's like how your neb is marked. It's mm-hmm. not marked by your unanim- mm-hmm. anonymous examiners. Mm-hmm. That's one. Get peer reviewers, readers, Mm. because they're the ones going to buy the book Mm -hmm. and say, listen, this is my target audience. You fill in that space. Mm -hmm. Can you read the book and get back to me? Give them a fee for reading if you want. They may do it for free, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. Pay them for that. Mm -hmm. They're good because they're the readers Mm -hmm. and they're the ones who give you more feedback on Twitter. They're the ones who will say, you have to go. There's a book launch. There's this. It's not the editor. It's not the academic. Yeah. You should also give it to, I suppose, because in literature, in books, the the world of literature 
and academia has merged quite a bit. Yeah. And I would say make sure that the spaces of academia have access to your work even mm. beforehand. So they know we have this, do as many readings as you can in universities. Mm. They have access. Allow them mm. to use your book as a tool for literature. Mm-hmm. Be confident enough mm-hmm. in what they, of course, not everything, because it's literature. Of course. It's not all going to be applause. They're criticizing it yeah. because that's part of what they do in class. Yeah. Be ready for that and be, have honest conversations. Be ready to sit at panels yeah. because those are the people who are going to buy the books when you have a reading. Those are the people who are going to invite you again when they have other professors around the world meeting. Do we have all that stuff you're talking about? Do we have it here in Uganda? Peer I, reviews? I know that Makere University used to host biannual uh, literature Fairs every two years. It was around East Africa, actually, the East Africa Literature Association mm-hmm. fairs or something. So you'd have it in different universities: University of Dar es Salaam, then Makerere University, mm-hmm. a university in Kenya, maybe University of Kenyatta, mm-hmm. yeah. and then Rwanda. So that was really good. I attended the one. I've attended two in Uganda. I think South Africa was amongst those as well. Yeah, that's really good. That's when you have things like what you're talking about, the peer reviews, the yeah. one. Really, really important. Yeah. Really important. So at the end of the day, uh, one way or another, it is important for me as a writer yes. to expose myself to such like people, as many as possible, yes. and it refines me. Yes. I shouldn't be scared of uh, yes. that kind of exposure. Yes. Just categorize the people so that you don't have your friends only. Yeah. Uh, the experts, the peers, you know somebody who doesn't know you're a stranger, an academic from another university who yeah. is interested in African literature and say, you know yeah. what, would you like to read this? Yeah. Of course, I'm interested in African literature. Right. And then they will use it as a topic. They might even look at it as a topic of anthropology and you're like, right. absolutely not. It's about, right. But hey, if it's anthropology for them, yeah. let it go. Let it, go, yeah. it doesn't belong to you anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, their piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's important. It's important. Well, so Bev, uh, at what point in time uh, I want to see your thought pattern and your thinking about I want to go and do masters in creative writing. What 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 informed that? You you already have a degree in education and, and, and that stuff. You zeroed in on writing. Was there some evidence yeah. that I'm going to get paid through writing? W- was that the, the the thing that was making you go do that? What informed your decision? I, by that time, I knew that there was so much someone could do as a writer. Yeah. Because I'd been part of so many seminars within Uganda. Mm. I'd been part of so many spaces of different writers, and it was exciting. Mm. I had met writers from different parts of the world, and they wowed me. Mm. They wowed me with their energy, with their thought process. Mm. And I wanted to be part of that universe so much. Mm. Also... We used to attend lots of writing seminars as members of FemWrite. Mm. British Council used to host writers from all over the world mm-hmm. and would go there. It was so exciting mm-hmm. to meet these people from all over the world discussing your work. Mm. They introduced the Lancaster Creative Writing Fellowship Program, yeah. scholarship program, yeah. and they'd always send us these. Yeah. It was after a while, like, why don't I apply for it? Yeah. They're giving you a great scholarship. You have yeah. to look for the rest of the money. Yeah. It did seem possible. It was also long distance, meaning yeah. that you would be here half the time and travel to England okay. half the time, yeah. which worked for me because I had one child. Yeah. And I, at that time when I applied, I knew by the time I ended, I was going to have another. Mm, mm, <laughs> so it worked for me. Mm. And that was it. I just knew that there was so much within the space of writing. Mm. It was the endless opportunities. Mm. I'd also started the BN Poetry Award, supporting Ugandan women poets, mm. and mm. I was getting funding for that. Mm. So that made me believe, do you know writing could actually be a space where you have an impact? Mm. You create an impact mm. on people, mm-hmm. you change their lives, mm-hmm. and you make them realize how they can make this a business as well as an entrepreneurial space so, as well as a creative journey yeah so so basically you you become a transformer so to yeah. speak is it yes. a transformer or you become a transformative force in society yeah. through your writing yes you pick a particular thing in society that yeah. like now for example you pick the the idea of women yeah. and you're using the writing as a tool you're earning from it at the same time you're transforming the society yes. Yes. It's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing. And you find the people who are willing to fund you for those activities. So for a few years, we were funded. Even when we broadened it and started promoting African poets, the Babishai Poetry Foundation, people were interested in funding the festivals, the books we published. It was exciting to know. And then it became busy because you connect with other people who invite you. 
go to Nigeria for a festival, mm. go here to read, mm. you know, come to Kenya and be part of this space. It was really exciting how important they were taking this. Mm. One of the most impressive spaces I attended was the African Women Writers Symposium in Johannesburg, 2011. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I went with Doreen Bangana. Mm. Oh my goodness, the Department of Art and Culture in the government has so much money just for arts. That was in 2011. I'm this, not sure. This is in Uganda. The, no, the, that's in, in South, South Africa. Africa. Okay. That was in 2011. And I thought, so much money. They gave us a lot of per diem. We were treated in a nice hotel. But that level of organization, we met Nadine Godima. Mm. That was, I think, three years before she died, plus Nawal al Sadwi, the famous Egyptian author. My goodness, these mm-hmm. people were walking around and they, we had access to them. Huge names in writing. Yeah. When you buy their books, it changes everything about how important it is for your voice to be heard and have an impact. Because people like Nadine, the, the first, she, she was the first African Nobel laureate. Yeah. People like Nawal al Sadawi, a feminist activist, excellent poet, mm-hmm. who went through a lot of patriarchal uh, you know, discrimination mm-hmm. because she was an Egyptian woman and mm-hmm. then an activist. Mm-hmm. Just knowing that their writing helped transform communities because they wrote as activists. Yeah. So writing can do so much. Yeah. And then there's Penn International. I know writers who have gone into exile because of their writing, because their writing is so powerful mm-hmm. that communities and, and governments mm-hmm. cannot tolerate that. Not. And yeah. so yeah. They, they, they got into exile and Penn has helped secure them in other places. But that's how powerful writing is. And so you grow from just liking the musicality of words to knowing how big this organ is an organism. Yeah. It's wow, this writing thing is huge and yeah. it's endless. Yeah. Yeah. Let's 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 try to advise. Okay, let's not try. Let's advise <laughs> yeah. young and cu- upcoming writers. People who have absolutely no clue yeah. uh, what writing can do, yes. what steps they can be able to take and and so on. From what you've just said, the world is open for writers especially those ones who are gifted and they want to lean into it. Uh, what I've learned from you so far is that you allowed yourself to be in the environment, yes. in the ecosystem of writers, and it's been able to move you from one place to another. A guy who is, he knows he has the one person you talked about. Yes. He can write or she can write. What would you advise her or him to do? to make a, you know, a, a name for themselves, and transform the societies uh, in, in this world yes. through their gift, their 1% of writing. I would say don't aim at making a name for yourself. Right. Read. Read from excellent writing. Mm-hmm. And there's access. The access we have to writing is just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I start with Aesop's Fables, what I read to my children, because yeah. I know they'll take a minute, two minutes, to, and that's the amount of attention they'll give me, the five-year-old approach, that's the attention they'll give me. Yeah. We do Ace of Fables, I do the gimmicks and, and that's it. Do you understand? Yes, the frog and the ant. Okay, let's read another, the sheep and the goat and that's it and I'm done but I've introduced them to words. They may be not paying attention but afterwards I'm like, have you heard? Yes, repeat what I've said. Ace of Fables. Then there are so many, do you know that if you look at the hundred books of the 20th century, they're all downloadable. Things yeah. like the Great Gatsby, yeah. you can download them Even the for Shakespearean free. Shakespearean books for free. Yeah. The whole of Shakespeare yeah. is available for free. Mm-hmm. You don't even have to say, "Oh, I have to save money for a book a month." No, mm-hmm. the whole of Shakespeare. And you know how Shakespeare is. You read it once, it will be the 20th time mm. when you get it, mm. and then it's another. It's like things fall apart. Mm. You read every year, like, how come I miss that? Mm. How can I miss that? Yet mm-hmm. you read it all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, so you have all the Shakespeare that are available. You have the 100, 1984, The Great Gatsby, all of those available. Mm-hmm. You have the series, some series you watch on TV like Bridget and mm-hmm. all those books are available for download for mm-hmm. free. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. And so read. When you read, you become so immersed in what writing does that without knowing, you find that your own creative expression changes. Yeah. I've noticed a lot my writing has changed because I've started reading more online books. They're faster for me to read. Yeah. With these other books, because you don't want to carry a big handbag, yeah. they're in, then the pages yeah. fold, then the this, yeah. the what, and then yeah. some child has scribbled on it. Yeah. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah. I discovered that I could download so many on my phone. Yeah. I was like, oh my goodness, why am I suffering? You should yeah. see me. Yeah. And if only people knew. Because when I go to bed, I want to go with the light off, yeah. but I still want to be on my phone. Right. I read. I'm right. not on Facebook or social media. I'm reading, reading and they yeah. know, and I'm telling my eldest daughter, the 13-year-old, 
have you read this book that I sent you? Oh my goodness, I finished it. And these pa- books are 100, 400 pages. Yeah. I can read them in two days. If it was a hard copy, I wouldn't. Whoa. Hard copies are so hard. For some reason. Yeah. Hard copy is... I'm telling you, online books are amazing. You yeah. read it. Then I keep thinking, wait, is it abridged? Is it... But it's actually 400 pages. Yeah. It's amazing. I realize my own writing has changed as a result of mm. me accessing. So I'll tell them to read. Don't look at making a name for yourself. Mm. Read, read. And then write. Don't write a book first. Mm-hmm. Get a diary and okay. write. Get a diary. Mm. Hard copy diary. Pen, write. Mm-hmm. Turn those into a blog. Mm. You know? mm. It's about the consistency. Mm. So read consistently, mm. write consistently. Don't write to make a name for yourself. Mm. Write consistently because you have a lot to say. Yeah. So write for yourself first. Yeah. Yeah. So a diary is important. And then share it with people. They'll yeah. tell you, you know what? A lot of what you write is about gardening. You yeah. could do a blog about gardening. Right. Like, what? Yeah. It's it's easily one of your passions. Yeah. And you'll find that you find an audience. Mm-hmm. Even if people aren't gardeners, they're fishermen and fisherwomen, mm. they will find what you're saying spectacular mm. because of the way you describe things. Haven't you read books and you have no interest mm. in 18th century life? Mm. But the way the person describes mm. Wow, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and and then you find, my goodness, wow! Mm-hmm. And then afterwards, you'll be commissioned, right? I've been commissioned to write things which are boring on an ordinary day, but the more I'm invested in the research, the more excited I become yeah, by it. Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah, the more excited you're like, oh my goodness! Oh. But then you research and you become excited. Oh my goodness! I, I really want this now. Yeah. I'm really excited yeah. now. Yeah. I'm invested. Yeah. And and that's what writing is. That's what research is because you find out it's about life. Yeah. You're able to capture things about your own life, other people's life. Mm-hmm. You're able to bring information and knowledge mm-hmm. to anybody, mm-hmm. and you have a fifty percent audience you're unaware of. Mm-hmm. Even more than that. Mm-hmm. Even more than that. When you talked about uh, blogs, I resonated with that because yeah. uh, you have my latest book, um, Discover Your Purpose. Yes. That, you know what I did? I got my blogs articles offline. I started writing about Discover Your Purpose as an article. It couldn't just stop. Oh. And then another one. And then another one. It went up to 37 articles. Because the way they're written, yeah. the progression. Yeah. I think for me, it's the progression of what it is. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Why? Yeah. And then the different images and yeah. then the verse. And yeah. yeah. 37 articles and then I just got them offline and then it became a book. So for a writer, it has to be a continuous research and writing. That's what you were learning from you. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Continuous. But also, it's not just writing. It's thinking and observing. Being curious. Being being curious. Being to your environment at all times. All the time. Observing things. It's like a photographer who captures images. You capture it in words. Yeah. It's it's, it's like that. A photographer will come and be like, oh my goodness, that expression. Lawrence, don't move. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good Lord. (laughs) A painter will come and be like, oh. Yeah. My goodness, the color of the sunlight on your eyes. And you're like, yeah. dude, are you drunk? Yeah. The, the painter will, two hours, and they'll thank you profusely, and they'll pay you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you'll find your portrait somewhere. You're like, mm. you know how people capture the most ordinary moments mm. and bring it to mm. life in mm-hmm. a way? No mm. way. Absolutely no way. But that's what a writer does. Mm. They make the dullest moment mm. exciting. Mm. Yeah. Well, who is your favorite writer in... Uh, in Africa? Oh my goodness, that, that's such a, a great question. There are many, I, because you may like one work and then the other work. Yeah, it's, it's or difficult. Or you read to... one book of, of, of theirs and then you don't read the other titles. Yeah. I've read, let me tell you one of the latest I've read of African authors. Yeah. And uh, let me see one of the latest I've read of African authors because now I've been reading a lot of 19th century literature right you know by americans but set in, in england yeah uh, i like cocaine Dibe a lot mm. mm-hmm. i like his work a lot mm. i like i read waiting by Goretti tromhendo it's now been translated into spanish mm. i really like Goretti tromhendo's uh, i mean sorry susan chiguli's african saga it's mm. my favorite poetry collection of hers mm. favorite favorite mm-hmm. i do appreciate 
Grace Ogot, a Kenyan. Mm. I appreciate Things Fall Apart, of course. It's one of my favorite of his. Mm -hmm. I don't appreciate his other works as much as I appreciate Things Fall Apart. Mm. And so it's always Lola Shanayan, Babasegi's Wives. That was just excellent. So entertaining. Mm -hmm. So entertaining. Oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. And then there are different short stories like Abubakar Abd Ibrahim, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I like The Whispering Trees, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And his short story collection, I prefer it to his novel. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's always a work that speaks to you in mm -hmm. such a profound way. Mm -hmm. They're different so, poets. We have rich, a rich yes. heritage uh, of, of, of writers in, in oh, Africa. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's the like list is we, endless. Yeah. I love of late. I've been reading quite a lot of uh, Biko Zulu. I don't know oh, if his blog. Oh, my Biko goodness. Zulu. I had to stop. I was getting addicted. I wouldn't do work. <laughs> I'll just read his blog. He talks about a traffic jam in Arubi. You How can do you describe a traffic exactly. jam? Exactly. And I feel I'm in the traffic jam myself. Exactly. <gasps> That's Biko Zulu. Oh, yeah. No, he's brilliant. He's like he's absolutely really, brilliant. Really, really, really. Yeah. But you see, he's writing all the time. Yeah, yeah. He's so writing. The, 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 the idea of consistency uh, uh, in there. Yeah. You can also see how the, the other thing you talked about being observant and uh, just being in the element of a writer and looking at. The most ordinary thing, but yes. bringing life to yes. it. That's what he does. Yeah. So let me ask you this: for you, w what is your productivity hack in terms of writing? Uh, do you have a daily routine, a weekly routine, yeah. a monthly routine? What do you do for your writing? That's great. If I have a target, mm -hmm. be, for example, my poetry collection, "Dress Me in Disobedience," my target was to have it out launched by. Jan 2nd this year mm -hmm. and therefore when I started the editorial process in October mm -hmm. I had a target do one poem a day edit one poem a day in October mm -hmm. so that by the end of it you have edited all the new poems mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. and then November you've gone through the old poems and people have also read them mm -hmm. December work on the printing and publishing. Mm. So that, that's it. When you have a target, it's because writers, we think we have all the time in the world. Sometimes it's good to be time bound. Until the deadline it helps, comes. Until the deadline comes. <laughs> the book I'm editing now, I've set a deadline okay. with my client. Mm. She, she's a doctor. So she's really, really strict. <laughs> yeah. Didn't done when. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. And so she's a doctor who likes results. I'm a writer who also likes results, yeah. but I want my results in a different kind of perfection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How she wants to know, she has treated 10 patients. Yeah. For me, I want to know, is the message clear? Is it and excellent? I want to sit on it. Mm. Ah, tomorrow, let me get back mm. to it. Mm. Ah, she's like, but by this time, you should have treated five patients. Mm. But I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm. let me go back to this next week. Mm. And she's like, but by next week, we should have been on the other ward. Mm. And so we were thinking differently in mm. that. And it's, whew, man, mm -hmm. it's totally something. Mm -hmm. But I am bound by a contract. But also because I've learned that it doesn't actually hinder your creative process. Mm -hmm. It does make you disciplined. Because mm -hmm. a lot of it is discipline, the mm -hmm. consistency. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me because Zulu wakes up every day with sunshine in his ears. I'm going to write. <laughs> happy. No. Yeah. Sometimes something on the news has frustrated him. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes, yeah. oh my goodness, it's been a bad day at home or work. Or he's had bad news from a friend. He mm -hmm. doesn't wake up. Mm -hmm. It's the consistency mm -hmm. that makes him do it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I know that when I'm given work mm -hmm. and I have a client, it's mm -hmm. just knowing the consistency and the discipline. Mm. So I have to be disciplined to submit an mm. amount of work mm. soon, mm -hmm. which if it wasn't for the client, I'd be like, oh, maybe next month. <laughs> I'm sure in June, yeah, yeah, the yeah. mood would be better. <laughs> yeah. How about when you don't have deadlines? That's what is great. Your, what is your productivity? My masters help me to appreciate timelines still. Yeah. And so I look at the calendar. I mm. try to put my calendar June to June. Mm. And I say, listen, if my year now starts June to June, mm. What am I doing June to December? Mm. You know what December looks like. Mm. So my productive months are actually May and October. I use those to reflect. I spend less time mm. on on activities that are time-wasting. So May and October, I just find that in my cycle, mm. are times when I really produce creative work. Right. And then the months around that are planning around what to do with it. Yeah. Either what am I going to produce or what am I going to do with what I have yeah. produced. Yeah. So this month and then October are going to be times when I really, for some reason it's been the cycle. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. I wake up early, 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Whoa. 
Yes, that is my thinking time, which is so important for me okay. in my productive process. I must think. Yeah. And while I say, while I look at different speakers, I follow Miles Monroe a lot, Craig Groeschel, different speakers because yeah. it helps with my public speaking as well. Yeah. And a speaker is a creator, so it's all in the part of the creative process. Yeah. I I try to think mm. about where I want my life to be. Mm. So I don't structure it and say, okay, you have this work to do. Think about this business idea. No. Mm. I just think for the sake of thinking for my mind to be cleansed mm. and for me to be uplifted mm. by good thoughts. Mm. So I'll pray as well. I'll have the Bible open sometimes. Yeah. But I know that by the end of it, yeah. my mind is more cleansed because I've allowed this process of healing to happen, mm. if you may call it mm. that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Hold on one minute. So let's go back to the money. Yes. Uh, people normally ask, where is the money? It's a fair uh, before question. Before we can go there, have you ever been frustrated by that question? That you've been doing writing, 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 but yes. where is the money? Yes, I have been frustrated because I don't have an answer. Yeah. And because I know I ask myself that question a lot. Yeah. We're usually frustrated by questions that have undertones of truth. Right. Aren't we? Right. Um, so, where is the money? When are you going to do this? Yeah. How come for you? They may be spiteful, but yeah. they have undertones of truth. And that's why we're frustrated because we don't have a comeback. Yeah, yeah. All right? Yeah. And often I haven't got a comeback. But I know that as writers, either you have a business partner or you learn business modeling so mm. that you package it as a product. It does not take away from your creativity. Mm. It just enables you to enjoy your creativity more because you're earning from it. So it is important for the money issue to be sorted. Absolutely. Let me tell you something. Yeah. It's the biggest lie when they tell you it's your passion and what. Yeah. Do you know that passion will become the biggest discomfort of your life? Yeah. I say this with the utmost confidence because I've been through that. It's my passion. Yeah. And then you are stuck broke. You're mm. still paying rent. Mm. And then you grow up and you have children. Mm. And then you have all these bills. And because you started, because I started my writing journey early, before I had any of those challenges, mm. I always thought by the time I'm 30, mm. I'll be doing so many other things and then I'll have published anyway. It's not that. Mm. All right. I could have gone into academia because academia gives you a consistent income, doesn't it? Mm. So I could have mm. gone into academia, done three degrees mm. in writing mm -hmm. and been an assistant professor mm -hmm. in another university because that money is consistent. Yeah, yeah. You get, you're you, paid every month, you travel, you get stipends for research. It's consistent. Mm. You're assured of that. Yes, you're, it's assured. Mm. All right. And then they give you fellowships to, to do it. You get a brother. They're given, given so many fellowships and mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go there, but I could have. Mm -hmm. And I admire people who have because I know the work they put in. They put in so much work. They mm -hmm. are always working hard, marking mm -hmm. scripts and things. Mm -hmm. uh, there's that route. And, and they've answered the question for money themselves. They know. But they're also writing their creative books. I could have lived outside Africa. Yeah. Where... For me, as a Ugandan writer, there would have been opportunities for me to participate in spaces where I am paid to be a black female Ugandan writer and just write. Because full those spaces time. are there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Full time. Mm. And then on top of that, while I'm in this country, I'm invited here and invited there, invited everywhere. And my children have their fees paid and we have a house that's paid for us. That could have happened as well. Mm. And I, I was aware of those mm. things. And I almost did apply for that. However, my what I wanted was being in a community where I am part of a process of change. And I can see the change happening. Mm. And I work on the change with the people mm. in the community. Mm -hmm. And so the BN Poetry Award by Bishai was part of that process. Mm. And my the way I work is that same thing. And then in that, you learn how to create business units within and earn. Mm. It doesn't come as often as I would like. Mm. But I have learned, though, that there's no end to, to learning. Yeah. There's no end to learning. Yeah. And one of the things, because I've learned a lot about the creative writing process, mm. what I'm learning now is business mentorship. Mm. I'm in taking an intensive course. Lawrence, mm. I'll tell you mm -hmm. that never in my wildest dreams did I have called myself a businesswoman. I never wanted to. Mm -hmm. But I have learned to appreciate what business is. Mm -hmm. I'm taking an intensive 
intensive course. It's mm-hmm. so intensive. Mm-hmm. And I and to know that I was even shortlisted to be part of it, that yeah. was the biggest ha ha for me. Yeah. I thought, no way. Yeah. So I thought, are they taking everyone? Yeah. Surely. What marks did I get? I'm yeah. not joking. This is not even fake humility, which I absolutely hate. <laughs> But now I'm so interested in business and what it means. Mm-hmm. And to know that my writing is just 10%. It's just a product. There's a whole part of market mm-hmm. research and understanding the client and the mm-hmm. process of advertising. All of that mm-hmm. is different. And it does involve the creative process. But mm-hmm. it also involves a lot of discipline, consistency. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I'm passing the exercises, that we do four exercises. I'm so excited because I'm actually doing well. Mm-hmm. Lawrence, I am... I in my I would never have thought myself in the remotest. Yeah. And you only pass when you have submitted the work on time and you get certain scores. Yeah. Every time I pass, I'm like, oh my goodness, I do another like what? What? Because <laughs> they give me that motivation. Yes. They they're validating me yes. as a businesswoman. <laughs> By the time I am done, I don't even know where I'll be taking my writing after this. Mm. And I want to share with other people because I'm telling you it's so it's enormously mm. disconcerting when you're highly gifted, mm-hmm. someone less gifted than you mm-hmm. is earning much more because mm-hmm. they just understand business. They just know how to package what they do as an editor, as a creative writer. They're in advertising business. They've got clients around the clock. You are there with your gift. And gift with alone, your sense of without a combination of other things. Without anything else. They have the confidence of the market, of the going out there. Whoa. And so this is what it's, it's something different. So the the, the the course, the business course you're doing, is it tailored for writers? It's not tailored for writers. It's tailored. It's for entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. They call yeah. it for entrepreneurs. So yeah. there may be people in different things. Yeah. yeah. Agriculture Musicians, and whatever. there could be yeah, yeah. there could be all kinds of entrepreneurs. Yeah. I believe most of them are actually business people who say I have a business, mm-hmm. I sell cars, I sell they actually come out as business people. I'm not. I'm a writer who wants to make business out of writing. That's it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And all I thought was, oh, just publish, sell publish. Mm-hmm. There is so much the more. model of sell publish oh, no longer works. No way. No longer works. No as in publish and sell, mm-hmm. publish a book and, and sell. It no longer works. No. Because uh, again uh, you, you've seen just yes. like you've said that we, yes. uh, the, there's so much information there's available. So much. The yeah. same way uh, there's the, the copy and pasters. Yeah. Yes. They are out there in the drops. Yes. It's easy for someone to go onto the internet yeah. and just uh, oh, yeah. uh, gather data from this yeah. place and that place and, and and just you know create. So very many authors actually yes. uh, as, as compared gurus. to very many of yeah. them. All right. So the publish and sell is no longer a model. That's what no. you're telling writers. Yes. It's no longer a model it's, that is... It's important, but what you have to know is that as a product, publishing and selling, there's so much more to it. For example, writers now need to understand what communication means, need to understand the value of a PA. Do not be the one to answer all emails asking you to speak at events yeah. as a writer. Mm-hmm. Do not. Mm-hmm. You get someone to do that. A virtual assistant or a PA. Get a virtual assistant, get a PA. Mm-hmm. And a writer may think, what? Just answering an email? The moment you get distracted mm. and are answering emails, you forget your creative writing post, and then you're so busy and flustered. And they're like, when is the next book out? You see? Mm. The moment they understand that as a business person, mm. be the writer. Look pretty in your library with your laptop. That's all you need to do. Mm. Let us take care of you. Mm. To the point where you get someone to choose your makeup, to dress you, mm. you become like Chimamanda. Oh, I didn't mention has one of my favorite authors, yeah, did I? Americana. Oh, I, I oh, knew, oh, I knew you were gonna go there oh, at some point in time. She has people to do that for her. Yeah. How much time does Even she speaking, have? Even speaking, the speaking yes, she does. Speak- what time do you think she has to start answering every email? Let yeah. her agents do that. She wouldn't produce half the book she did if she didn't. So have what that. you're telling me that it's not just sitting on a laptop and no. creating your work. There's a whole There's world. a hive of activity. Yeah, yeah. That you have to that has to be there for you to manage. So you have to have a network of people who are doing things for you so that you can manage. Get a driver to pick your children from school once in a while. Mm. So that mm. you mm. submit that day. Instead of saying, I have to pick my child. I have this chapter to edit. Let me first pick the child and come back. Mm. Do you know what's going to happen? You'll go, the teacher says, oh, yes, you didn't come for sports day. You didn't come for the award giving. These are the awards. You didn't come for PTA. Da, 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 da. All these things you don't have. And then you, what, how, what editing are you going to do on that chapter? Mm. You need a driver. Mm. You need a PA. You need a virtual assistant. You need someone to market. 
you shouldn't be calling these people my here books okay here are my books and you know get someone to find out how many booksellers are there like mahiri around africa mm. let them do it for you let the accountant tell you we have sold 10000 books this month this is what's on the account this mm. is what we spent for printing this in a meeting and then go back and write and as you grow so think that big and grow towards it don't become a writer and think magic will happen because it's an exhausting process there's just so much more mm. it's a hive of activity mm. look at the musicians you see them on stage do you know what they have behind there you see that guitarist there yeah he also didn't sleep for 6 weeks for that yeah. concert yeah do you see the, how they all dressed smart mm. you think that designer slept did not sleep for 6 months to get the concept the stage set up do you know where they traveled just to get the right lights mm. what times they had to practice mm. some of their practices are overnight Yeah. That's the only time it's free. Yeah. And that's when people have time. Yeah. For that hotel. Yeah. That's it's, it's a whole and once you realize that then your brand can grow comfortably. Look at the daily talk show hosts you listen to. By the time they're there, they've got someone who has done their makeup, who has edited, the audience has sat, the invitations went out right, they know when the advert is coming on, the script. Oh my goodness. Beverly, is that the ideal or that's what people should be doing? I I believe that if people geared towards growing big, yeah. Even if they hit a target halfway, they would feel excellent in the so space. So they should actually have that as as the the, the, the direction they are taking, the they place where they're going. They should think yeah. big. They should think instead big of just thinking think I'm going to be writing. No, and, they should think about how they can earn. This thing of passion, passion is great. Think yeah. big. What else can I do from my writing? So What use else? the passion but mm-hmm. clothe passion is let's say let's call it a skeleton yes, right yes. but then feed yes. the skeleton with yes. with this and yes. with that and and, yes. and so on create an ecosystem yes. create connections yeah. out of yes. out of it and and so on Yeah if you call yourself a writer yes If you're a businessman who's blogging for the fun of it that's, that's different okay, yeah. If you say you are a writer If you identify yourself as a writer you 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 it's better you earn a living from it the passion people are not going to feel sorry for you and say oh your book you know very well that you have so many friends people who follow you people who know about the purpose book use it for coaching mm. but half of those people have not bought your book yet yeah and that's what it is for a writer mm. you'll get shocked you advertise you do all these things i have to buy have, on every whatsapp group that you mm. have to buy i have to buy mm. But you still have to tell people please buy. Mm. It's exhausting. Mm. You get someone else to do that. Mm. Don't be the writer who does that. At this point we have to be mm. but think big. Don't be the person who does that. Mm. If you want to outgrow that model outgrow as that. in you can yes. start from there of you course. You start from there of course start from there. Outgrow, yeah, it. outgrow it. Outgrow it. And I've seen how wonderful it is when you just have a sales person and oh, they, wow. you tell them take the commission. You know that the books at Aristoc I'll get at the check. It's wonderful knowing that they're doing the work for you. When people tell you, "Oh yeah, I got it. I found it in Aristoc. Please mm-hmm. autograph for me." Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, the feeling mm-hmm. is great. Mm-hmm. You know? mm. Yeah. Let's talk about your works right now. Yeah. Uh what have you produced as a writer so far? I mean, uh, is it poems, yes. are they books or kind of books yeah. are they? I've produced two poetry collections my own poetry yeah. the latest was dress me in disobedience yeah. really a voice that says the stifled life we've been living enough let's speak out already right. not as women as individuals right. really mm. against everything every form of oppression oppression of self we oppress ourselves mm. by being gullible to what people tell us mm-hmm. without understanding the truth mm. we need to explore life instead of being told you know what Hawaii is a good place to visit. Go and visit it. Don't let people tell you oh, the Empire State Building is so hot. You go there and visit. Mm-hmm. So what experience I'm saying is hey, go and experience your life. Oh. Do that. That yeah. was the latest in January. Yeah. In 2010, my first book was a chapbook collection on jumping. Mm-hmm. It was saying undo, relearn, mm-hmm. more or less. Mm-hmm. A lot of it was erotic poetry as well. I was writing mm-hmm. a lot of erotic poetry those days. Mm-hmm. And people loved it, especially mm. Kenyan people, bloggers. Kenyan, Kenyans love it. Kenyans <laughs> love it. I've seen it. They that, love it. Yeah, that's why I made a lot of but, but Kenyan why, blogger friends actually. <laughs> why, why were you doing erotic? Uh... I don't know why that theme came so easily to me. It came so easily to me. Travel and erotica. It just came so easy for me. So I traveled different places and then I would make every experience an erotic experience. It just came so easy. Yeah. 
you know. Did, did, did our society uh, um, uh, accept it at that moment? Because I writing? spent a lot of time with creative writers and they all accepted it. Okay. There was never anyone who said, what? Only a few who said, but Beverly. But I spent a lot of time with writers. You know, yeah. when you're a community of writers who yeah. are accepting and who find it fascinating and yeah. blogging had just started those days and yeah. <gasps> wow. Mm. So, no, I, I felt I got more praise and acceptance than anything, actually. Mm. A lot of wow, actually. Mm. A lot, a lot of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, none of us was on Facebook then, mm. so we're more closed and we knew each other mm. more. We're just like, oh, I'll read your blog all mm. that time. No one has time to read people's mm. blogs now. Mm. Post on Facebook, we don't want to even read all the article. Mm. We're like, oh, okay, mm. back tomorrow, something else on Instagram mm. now. Mm. But we had a lot of time to care about what each person had to say. Yeah. And I, I used to belong to different reading and writing clubs and you just sit and hear each other's works. There was a lot of time for that. Is days. that important, Beverly? Of the, course. The, the yeah. ecosystem of, of fellow <coughs> writers and, and, yes. and bloggers and, yes. and all that stuff, it's, it's critical for it a is. writer? It is, because it inspires your discipline. It also helps you to know you're not alone when you're going crazy and you're like, oh my goodness, yeah. I'm frustrated. Yeah. They cheer you up. Yeah. Yeah. But Do, then again, you can feel too comfortable if they're not the type who are inspired. Yeah, pushing and, you and. Okay. Uh, do, do we have other organizations apart from Femrat? Femrat, is it yeah. just for poets? No, Femrat is for writers, Uganda women writers. Writers? Yes, all writers, in, short story, short novelists. Short stories, novelists, even self help and all that so, stuff. Everything. Everything yes. in there. Yes. Do we have a men's version of the same? There's no men's version, but there is <laughs> Nabotu National Book Trust of Uganda run by Charles. Nabotu. So they're different writing spaces. Yeah spaces that support writing, different publishing houses run by men. Yeah. But an organization that runs like Femrite, no. Mm. So we're supporting male writers in Uganda. Mm. Unless it's underground, I haven't heard of it. But I know a lot of poetry organizations run by men. Mm. Kitara Nation mm, yeah. is run I, by... I, I like Kitara Nation. Yes. Yeah. Seka Jan Kagai. So, yeah. so there are spaces run by male artists. But I know of poetry houses. I don't know outside the poetry circle. Okay. I think because I spend more time with poets. Okay, okay. Or well, they spend more time with me. I don't know. But we spend more time in each other's yeah. spaces. W- yeah. What would you say about the quality of our writing in, in, in the yeah. spaces that you've, you've spent and the yeah. works that you've read of, of our fellow authors, uh, yeah. our peers, our colleagues? What, what would you really say? That's a really great question. I would say that in terms of quantity, a lot has been produced. Yes. In terms of encouraging one another, there's a lot of that. Yeah. In terms of confidence in letting people know that we are writers, a lot of that. Mm. I believe that overall, the quality has improved in that people are aware mm. that they need to go through the quality process and mm. checking. Mm. Checking before you say I'm publishing a book. Mm. Checking before you print. Mm. On the other hand, because of the excitement of wanting to publish and publish, mm. sometimes there's not enough checking. Mm. I think what we need more of are professional editors. We have so many writers, but Mm. fewer people who say, I'm here just to edit, Mm. bring your work. Mm. That process is quite limited. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, that's what I've seen. That process is limited. Okay. So the ecosystem in our country could do well with With additional editors. editors editors. Just editors, yeah. We've been saying that uh, editing is uh, one of the scariest things. You need it. My, my editing, yeah? Like, yeah. Oh, let me tell you. Ha, ha. Yeah. I won't lie. Yeah. I won't lie. <laughs> yeah. You're, 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 you're right. Yeah. When you talk about editing, I'm sure we're talking about, we're not talking about grammar and, 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 and spelling. No, that's really the proofreading. That's proofreading. That, yes. Yeah. Editing is, is, is more like, and it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because a proofreader should be somebody else. Yes. But often they're just clumped into one. When I do work, you're telling the client, okay, then the proofreading will cost this. But I thought you're going to say so you just add the fee and say, yeah. okay, fine, I yeah. will get a proofreader. Or if I do it myself, I have to increase the fee here. Yeah. It takes a lot. Yeah. Editing would be, what do you want to say? Yeah. How have is you it said it? Out? Yes. Yeah. Have you said it? What do we take out that is unnecessary, mm. that does not contribute to the topic? Mm. If you are writing about. Toyota cars. Mm. Do we need to have five chapters on a Nissan car? Maybe mm. not. Let's mm. take those five. Maybe let's add mm. half a paragraph mm. about Nissan just for comparative purposes. Mm. An editor does that. Mm. So they look at it and say they fix it like, aha, now the message is clear. Mm. It's compact enough. Yes. Then a proofreader will look and say, okay, so like a car, you need to put pressure yeah. to fix it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yes. And we need both. 
we need we need you definitely need both although the editor sometimes does both yeah it doubles does, up as doubles a, up a proof, proofreader i would say that's why i say give it to another eye mm. like I, i whenever i do the work alone i go crazy so i always give something like you know what take it so you you th- there's also an element of building trust in the ecosystem so that when you get some kind of work yeah. you can be able to give to someone yes. else who can yes. have another eye yes. and then the quality yeah. increases although the trust is difficult to build if you're not getting paid enough that's why most people want to take it. on so much workload oh yeah and they don't meet the deadlines of their client yeah because they're just taking on so much work yeah and that's a challenge isn't it yeah. it's a yeah. challenge yeah. 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 it's yeah. a real challenge yeah. Yeah. as writers how do we earn in Uganda Yeah. Uh, you've been in the ecosystem for quite a while. Yeah. What are the avenues through which guys are earning? Of course, we've already talked about yes. editing. Yeah. Are there other avenues through which writers yes. are earning? Yes. People write ghost writing. Ghost writing. People have started a lot of ghost writing mm. for entrepreneurs who want their work out, mm. uh, philosophers, mm. people who have made an impact in the community and they feel they're advanced in years, mm-hmm. 70 mm-hmm. years, they're like, "Oh no, I want to write my book." Mm-hmm. families will pay you to say write about my judge write about my grandfather or something mm. and there's a lot of work in training i do a lot of work training people so parents come and say my training child people to write, to write. Right. especially with children so a parent will come and say my child is the most amazing writer since shakespeare can you please <laughs> and then you look and say actually they're not anywhere close to shakespeare but <laughs> this is our bill yeah and so there's that there's yeah. I, i get a lot of that also because are people paying do people, people want are to pay people want because to pay <laughs> the, 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 someone came to my uh, my my social media page yes. uh, this week and uh, <clears throat> they said that uh, I want to do writing online and i told them um, uh, write me something this is my email yes. and let me see what it is that you you want to do yes they wrote a paragraph yes so i looked at the paragraph and i i thought this one needs a lot of help yes. actually needs a process in yes. coaching So I quoted for them and they they kept quiet. They don't want to listen to it because they think they're amazing. That's the problem, you see. You see the thing is a- apart from editors, we also need people to say you are ready or you're not ready. Yeah. People don't want that. They want to just jump to the stage yeah. without going through the vocal training. Yeah, yeah. They just want to jump to the publishing house without understanding anything yeah. about a sentence structure, yeah. you see? And that's a challenge. That affects the quality. You're right. talking about quality. Mm. And it's interesting, isn't it? And so you 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 you're like where do I begin with this child mm. who must tell my girls even write songs. Mm. Mm-hmm. They write songs. Do you know they have a novel? Mm. Do you know that he just my goodness he's so gifted <laughs> in his bedroom he's just writing. The thing is so great. Mm. Uh, Lawrence, eh? I got a novel. Eh? I said this boy watched a movie yeah. and if I get that movie yeah. I will find it and send to the father. Yeah. like They were in a plane in New York, then they were here, then they were NBA, then yeah. they were wearing tracksuits, Adidas, yeah. and I yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That dad convinced me that his child is a genius. I think 12-year-old novelist. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So you get, uh, and then you get those who are, <laughs> who tell you that, um, look through the book, please. And if you find anything, just highlight in yellow. Yeah. If you find, if, if there's anything, just highlight in yellow so we correct it. Yeah. My dear, from page one, the first paragraph. I know, and I they don't know, want to pay for it. I know, yeah. <laughs> I know. I've experienced, I've experienced that very many times. Yes. And by the way, I've come to realize that there are actually very many people who have books. Yes. Right. And yes. of course, they. It's it's easy to go to Microsoft Word and come out with forty thousand words. Of course, they can come. Out. But when you look at the very first thing that they have written, you know for sure you cannot endure reading up to the no. last. No, and they don't get it. And they've gotta pay you for that. Yes, but they they kind they of they don't like, want to because they think it's complete. Yeah. The worst thing is that there's a difference. You see, some people say I want you to edit, but what you're doing is rewriting. 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 Said, Am I editing or rewriting? Like, if only you had given me the story to run with it. To start from to start from beginning scratch. to end. And if you want to take the credit, but pay me enough yeah, for that credit. Yeah. Don't tell me I'm editing and then put my name as the editor. Yeah, no way. Yeah, that's that's the kind of that's the kind of phenomenon I've seen a lot of late. Ch- you really have to set your standard and, and say and, no. And I've been I've been saying I I cannot I cannot have my name on this. Exactly. I know uh, you know about uh, Jackie Batanda. Yeah, you know her, Jackie her writing Batanda. process. Yeah, of course, she's a friend. Process. She's one of the people at Femrite who yeah. joined oh, together. Yeah, 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 she's yeah, one yeah. of the people. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've talked to people. Yeah. Who uh, 
they have told me Jackie sent their work back. Yes. She couldn't touch their yeah. work yeah, because perfect. of exactly what you're yes. saying. Yes. And now the problem is people think that as long as I have some words here, I just give to Beverly and Beverly will just do her magic and it's a lot of work it's if lot. it's not be, been done yes. by a writer. Yes, it is. People think that writing is is for everyone. Of course anyone can write mm. anything because anyone can speak. Yes. But when you talk about writing to communicate yes. or it's like saying to everyone can story, sing. Eh, that's it. It's like saying everyone we can all sing. Yeah. But are you going to pay me the same as you pay <laughs> Irene and Tali? I don't think so. Yeah. Anyone yeah. can tell jokes. Are you going to pay yeah. me the same as you pay Salvador? Yeah. Maybe yeah. not. Yeah. Let's be honest now. <laughs> people people need to understand yeah. that critical part. <laughs> And so you were telling me uh, several ways several avenues in which writers can earn one of them was yes. uh, ghost writing oh yes training a lot training. of training there's a lot of opportunity to train mm-hmm. even if you went to schools and said listen i want to introduce creative writing club you'd be surprised and mm-hmm. then you get parents who are interested mm-hmm. there's a lot they just have to market it well mm-hmm. and you'll enjoy it when you have young children who actually go through the process and they're excited you're mm-hmm. like we worked on this short story look mm-hmm. and then the parent is proud and they realize actually my daughter may not be Chino Achebe but hey mm-hmm. look at this short story mm-hmm. thank you mm-hmm. journalism now journalism has shifted you can now write about people's spaces as a advertising tool mm-hmm. and say I'll manage your social media handle mm-hmm. you are not a social media digital marketer mm-hmm. but you provide the content mm-hmm. there is money there and mm-hmm. writers need to know that mm-hmm. Be clear that you are not the digital marketer. Yeah. You are the you one are who provides content. content. Exactly. And you may say I'll provide content, give it to you. If you wake up at 11 a if you post at 11 a.m., you know you're going to get 5000 people liking it yeah. and 1000 resharing. Yeah. post it yeah i'm the one who's written it yeah that it there is a lot of money there because yeah. many of these people who are really influential yeah don't know how to articulate well but the reason they're influential is because they've inspired people the with house. their journey yes. yeah mm. and so their journey is so inspiring mm. but when they articulate on facebook it's you know it leaves a lot to be desired with a grammar mm. but people follow because they're inspired by the story this person is so authentic mm. this person because of their authenticity all they need to do is use their wonderful billions that mm. they have mm. and say you know what Lawrence mm. I hear you do this mm-hmm. why don't I pay you $2000 a month mm. so that twice a week mm. you, you create for me, create for me this relevant yeah. to me and yes this week our business is going through this yeah. here's the data this is my executive assistant's number yeah. follow her she'll give you everything yeah. and you send to the executive assistant you don't even have to send to this person yeah. the executive assistant manages the, right. you know Right. That's it. Mm. So they need to there's a lot there. You mm. just have to market it all because many of these people they will not realize they need they're like but I have you know 200,000 followers. Mm. What do I need mm. this for? But mm. they do mm. because leg- that's where legacy is created. Mm. Let me tell about this business mentorship program I'm running. Mm. It is so excellent. I had mm. actually applied for a business mentorship program run by a Ugandan who got lot of funding mm-hmm. but there was inconsistency in their response to mm-hmm. give us feedback if we've gone to the next stage or not mm-hmm. and isn't it polite to say uh thank you for the interview but Lawrence we well we really appreciated you at this point we're not able to hire you mm-hmm. but we do have your contact thank mm-hmm. you so much for the time you mm-hmm. took mm-hmm. to come for the interview mm-hmm. that's polite mm-hmm. no hard feelings mm-hmm. but you're the one who calls you're the one who whatsapps you're the one emails that does send a lot and i thought mm, it really made me question their integrity mm-hmm. that disappointment worked in my favor mm-hmm. because then i applied for this one mm-hmm. the level of excellence this man is such an excellent entrepreneur it's a west african based Yeah. mentorship program. Yeah. He's such an entrepreneur and he has a high of activity around him. Yeah. He's on Instagram. Yeah. You know, dancing with Sean Paul. Yeah. He's he shows his family yeah. dressed in the same pajamas. Yeah. He does what? And yet he still gets the work done because he has a he worked from the beginning. He must have been doing everything on his own. Yeah. But he built an this is an empire. It's not an enterprise. It's an empire, empire. Yeah. that's working in his favor. Mm. There are tens of thousands of people on the same program I'm on. Mm. They make you think that it's you alone. You ne- you can't oh. even tell. The way it's structured, eh? you think that's you alone. The way they communicate. Yeah. That's excellence and that's what Uganda needs to emulate because it's possible. But that's th- that it's possible to build those structures and that's the same thing. You see this person will never ever have a grammatical error on a Facebook post. Yeah. They will never. 
Never, ever, ever. Have you read Charles Onyango Bo's tweets? Yeah. There will never be a grammatical, even a comma will never be out of place. Yeah. Even a space will never be out of place. Yeah. I read his tweets a lot. I'm like, this yeah. guy edits and goes through. The, yeah. You know, he's consistent as a writer. His journalism, yeah. you know, consistency he, is crazy at a whole notch. level of crazy. Yeah. Um, and he said for 30 years he's never missed a Saturday, I think, submitting yeah. an article yeah. to yeah. two particular. Mm. That's, that's crazy that's, that's, consistency and yeah. commitment. Yeah. And that's what people need when it comes to writing. Mm. But when it comes to writing, even if you're if you're a person of influence and you're always writing on Facebook and Twitter, mm. be careful of your grammar because that's the level you're at. Mm. Hire somebody. Mm. Hire somebody Whoa. to just follow a story and get your mindset and and then they can look and say, you know what? Yeah, this is what I wanted to say. Thank you. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Don't hire them just to write your book. Yeah. Hire them to do your. The, brand you'll see the difference. Yeah. Y- you're a brand. You mm. cannot. You can. It's too expensive. If they know that it's too expensive, make a mistake in business. Why are they being so careless with their Facebook posts? Mm. You see, mm-hmm. there's a lot of money in writing. But just to let these people understand, mm. that's a whole new story. Mm, 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 mm. That's a whole to help them understand, mm, mm. getting them to understand and appreciate that. Mm. Mm. But there's money in that. Uh, in terms of writing. Yes, so writing about places. You can travel and say, I'm going to write about your place. Restaurants, reviews, mm. so to speak. Mm. You have to be honest, though. Mm. Some people don't like the honesty. If mm. They just want the praises. Mm. Um, if you put yourself out there as a society lifestyle blogger, you built a niche, yeah. then you would. I know uh, photojournalists have started that. Yeah. Do that, do that. And, and then you can build it and have, say, I have a photographer with me. Yeah. Because that works both ways now, isn't yeah, it? You need yeah, yeah. That. So you can learn photography or carry a photographer with you. Right. And say, you know, this week, pay for us. We're going to go to your lodge and write a review. Right. It's Christmas season. Why don't people start paying for tickets? You have a do it now in June. Mm. That person will make so much money. Mm. If they pay for you to go for three trips there, mm. they will, they will have no idea of how much money mm. they'll make. Mm. Instead of waiting for November for the Christmas, mm. do it in June. Mm. Wow. Mm. Or get a plan. So it's really about planning, isn't it? Mm. Say, listen, this is my plan. These are the 10 people I want to work with next year, 2023. If you plan and say, I want to start writing for banks, I hate financial investment, but you make it creative. Mm. I want to write about tourism places. I want to write about gorilla trekking. God help you. <laughs> I want to write. I wrote a story about gorilla trekking, by the way. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I want to write about this. It helps. Mm. I'm just reminds me asking about the books. <laughs> yeah. Then start talking about so many other things. <laughs> but yes, there is money. You mm. just have to think creatively and ask people. Ask a business person. You'd be surprised at what they'll say. They'll say, so yeah, what, what we're saying at the end of the day is the, the writing yeah. is a small percentage of the of the whole ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. It's a tiny you have to dot. have a combination of other things in place. Yeah, and you've got to be uh, you 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 got to be a business person. You, you have to think like a yes, a bit entrepreneur. Think like a, of course, a yes. Business person and write down the ideas. Writers yeah. are full of ideas. Just write down. And, writers always have ideas, but they're just they think of the execution and they're like. Oh, yeah, they give up on the execution yeah, when they, like, oh, yeah, goodness. who's gonna do that? Yes, mm. but just write down those, you'd be surprised. Mm. Okay, so even as we come to a close yeah. of this episode, uh, Beverly, there's something you mentioned earlier on about getting uh, scholarships and uh, fellowships yes. and so yeah. on. Where can guys who are writers and they're upcoming, yeah. where can they? get access to such like stuff that's a great question i follow particular writing groups on the internet on mm. instagram on twitter and on facebook which are these african writers trust is a good one by that's the one, way i know that's it. a good one mm-hmm. i follow the montreal poetry prize based mm-hmm. in canada mm-hmm. uh, sometimes on babishai we post quite a bit of african writing mm. opportunities on twitter if you go to poetry potion mm. <laughs> excuse me uh, Jalada mm. is a Kenya-based literary initiative. Mm. JamesMurua.com. Mm. He writes a lot about everything African literature. Mm. So if you go to those places that are collectives, mm. you'll find that every day they say opportunities here. Yeah, Brittle Paper is another journal. Mm. They have opportunities all the time mm. telling you what's happening with this Radcliffe Institute mm. in Harvard. They have an annual fellowship for writers. Commonwealth Writers Foundation always posts about their opportunities. Mm. Yes, it's, it's because I've been in the space so much, I know where to go. Mm. But yes, j- just start looking there. Mm. Start looking there. You'd be surprised. You'd be caught up for time, actually. You'd be mm. like, oh my goodness, I can't keep up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kalahari yeah. Review. There are a number that accept writing and yeah. always share opportunities. Yeah. So a writer needs to be in those spaces yes. consistently. Yes, but remember that they shouldn't detract from your writing. <laughs> 
Yes. You might be so busy applying for mm. these things that mm-hmm. you forget to write. That's why you need these people around you. These people, and then when you need to go, you're done lining up with a visa again. First of all, the passport. Yeah. And then the, oh, mm. yeah. Okay. So we've been having this wonderful discussion about yeah. writing and I think we've just scratched the surface. There's quite a lot. <laughs> There's a lot. I didn't tell about Gorillas of Winnie. Yeah. Mean, the short story that, collection. That, is that the latest? That, yes. That I, was the latest you did. Yes. I yeah. co-authored it with a friend, Dr. Harry Babikako. She said, oh, you know what? I have a story. I want to write about gorillas. I was like, what? <laughs> Thankfully, she's aware she's not a writer. Right. So she had gave me this one page thing. I said, okay, we are not going to write about that. I became so interested in gorilla trekking. I want to go. I actually got two opportunities. People who bought the book, two who owned lodges, said, "You're coming to stay at my place and go for real gorilla trekking." They just offered. Wow. Yes, and mm. the, see, that's another opportunity. Yeah. I never thought I'd write as a tourism person, but people now think I'm into tourism because yeah. I attended the yeah. Adventure Tourism Expo and I, yeah. I like adventure. Mm. And I talk about places I've been. They think, "Oh my goodness, she likes tourism." Mm. I do. Mm. I'm not a tour tour operator. Mm. I just like the idea of writing about travel. I think mm-hmm. it's, it's exciting. Mm-hmm. Endless opportunities. Mm-hmm. So Gorillas of Winter Avenue is about a family that mother and father went trekking. They left their two children, you know, Kampala, because they are seven and nine. You're not allowed to go at that age. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be 15 and above. And the, the adventure was fascinating. I learned so much. No going to the toilet when you're trekking. You have only one hour to take photos. You can spend six hours for sighting a silverback gorilla. They are clustered in families. They have 98% DNA as humans. I mean, I learned so much. People were sharing photos and their experiences. I need to go now. And mm. it's so cheap for East Africans. Yeah. Mm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so so w- w- what she brought to you, you thought you could retweak it and It's not deploy. retweaking. Re- no. Just... I just said, you want to write, me to write about gorillas? Let's forget. She had like two pages yeah. of, oh. I said, uh-uh. Let's do a story now. Yeah. yeah. You created the story. Yeah. yeah. But we, I went back and forth. I said, how about this? How about this? She's like, you know what? I like it. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so we come to the yeah. close of uh, today's episode. Yeah, great. There, there's, uh, there's just so much to talk about. <laughs> there uh, is. There uh, is. Uh, about writing. I think I'm going to track uh, your friend that you went to South Africa with. Uh, Doreen. Doreen, absolutely, yeah. I'm going to have a discussion with her. Also, I hope you've read her book, Tropic of Witch. I'm going to get it. Actually, I, I was, I was in. T- she, she launched it during uh, COVID. Was it during COVID? Oh no, it's been there since 2006. Really? Maybe she had relaunches, but there's, that there is something there she ages. did during, during. Um, she's been working on another book. Yeah. Did it come out during COVID? I'm not sure, but she's definitely been working on other work. That's what but I've been Tropical having in Fish. Mind. Oh, the the play the book was adapted into a play. That particular story, Tropical Fish, was adapted into a play, yeah. which was produced at National Theatre, performed early this year. Could have been January, because I moderated one of the sessions. Right. Either January or late last year. Yeah. I think it was early this year. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to uh, find uh, an opportunity to talk yes. to her and, and see what we can be able yeah. to learn from her also. Yeah. She has an interesting background uh, yeah. as uh, a lawyer, right? Yes. Who became a full-time writer. Yeah. Right, we're going to do that. So a- any any words of inspiration, encouragement to <laughs> our writers out there? This yes. uh, this month, of course, we're encouraging them. So what, what would you, maybe even if you're repeating yourself, but what would you tell them in a nutshell? I would say read, write, mm-hmm. Get a diary and write down goals you want to achieve every six months. Mm. If you want to participate in a festival, plan six months ahead. Mm. Go to the places I mentioned, find out where the festivals are at. Mm. Six months before, you'll find yourself attending. Mm. You'd be surprised. If you want to publish, find out the best publishers. Do they have literary agents? Mm. Give yourself two years to publish a good book. Mm. Find out excellent editors for your work. Mm. But make sure all that is in line with your goals. It's so easy to be distracted by this, that, this, that. Excited by this. An opportunity for this. Sometimes too many activities take away. It's not productive for you as a writer. Then you spend a two years going from one activity to another, yet you could have produced a good book. Mm, thank you so much, Beverly, for <laughs> gracing the show today. It's been thank uh, you. <laughs> a very wonderful discussion, conversation actually, and uh, I'm thankful that you took some time out of your busy schedule to come and talk to us about writing. We've learned a lot. 
we'll continue following you if guys wanted by the way if guys wanted your services uh, are you able to offer them ghostwriting training yes. <laughs> where do they get you if they wanted to to get in touch with you and uh, engage you yeah. maybe there's an organization out there that wants uh, yes. their works done uh, Good. content generated uh, I run the Babishai Poetry Foundation that promotes African poetry. How is that spelled? B A B I S H A I. Mm-hmm. Babishai Niwe Poetry Foundation. It's on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Babishai in Instagram. Mm-hmm. BN Poetry Award on Twitter. Mm. I'm always there. I'm also on Facebook. Mm. If they want to call, the country code positive two five six then seven five one seven zero three double two six. Yes. So they'll find Beverly there, and you'll yes. be ready to help them Absolutely. especially now that you've been exposed to this wonderful customer service experience with the with the oh, it's with this business uh, what do they call it business mentorship program business mentorship yeah. program the best yeah. i have experienced yeah okay ladies and gentlemen we come to the close of today's episode we are going to continue these discussions in this month we've been talking about writers we're going to continue talking about writers i mean talking to writers and having a conversation with them to know their process and everything in between until then bye bye thank you for listening to life signatures radio if you enjoyed today's show subscribe to life signatures radio on itunes stitcher or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com life signatures radio fresh clean and inspiring